We've been considering different tools or techniques, or in this case, rules, uh, that help us narrow the field of what type of real zeros that we may actually have in a polynomial function. And one of these is called Descartes' Rule of Signs. And what Descartes' Rule of Signs uh, tell, can tell us is the number of possible positive real zeros and the number of possible negative real zeros in a function uh, looking at the changing of signs between, let's say, f of x and then f of negative x. And these number of real zeros can be a number, anything less two, not to go below zero, if that happens to be the case. And probably the best way to explain this is just to go through it. So here we've got h of x equals positive 6x to the fifth plus 8x squared minus 10x minus 15. And so when I look at the sign changes of this, well, we go from plus to plus. We don't have a sign change. We're, going, we're talking about going from positive to negative. We're back and forth. And here we go from a positive 8x squared to a negative 10x. And so we've got one sign change, which tells us that we, we, we can have one positive real zero. Now, then we would go in here and say, well, what about h of negative x? Now, here's a tip. If the variable is raised to an odd-numbered exponent, the sign can change. And so if we had 6 raised to the power of h, let's say h of uh, I should put negative x in here. 6 times negative x raised to the fifth power. So let's say that x is a negative number here. And it's raised to the fifth power. Well, let's, let's go negative 1. Negative 1 to the fifth power is going to be negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1. An even power, if it's squared, well, that's positive 1. But if it's a negative exponent, it is going to be still remain negative, which would then change this sign to negative 6x to the fifth. Now, when it's an even power, the sign is going to stay, stay the same. And again, the reason for that, negative 1 squared is positive 1. Positive 1 times 8 is still 8x squared in this case. Uh, let's see, then we got negative 10x. Well, that's x to the first power, so that would change the sign to 10x and then minus 15. Now let's see how many sign changes we got now. We got one from here to here, and we have one from here to here. So we've got two possible sign changes. Now, we look at the sign changes, and if it's a number of two or greater, then it's either that or something or decreased by two. So here, since we have two sign changes, we could say that we've got two or zero. Notice how I could reduce that by two negative real zeros. So what's the most we can have? I could have one positive and two negative. That's three. But how many zeros are total? Five. That means I probably got two imaginary or two complex zeros at least. Could have four, in fact, because I could have one positive and no negative. And that would leave me with four imaginary. That's really kind of a lesson for another another moment. So let's look at one more and hopefully this helps clear it up. So here I got negative 11x to the fourth plus 20x cubed 
plus 3x squared minus x plus 18. So let's look at our sign change. So I'll go from negative positive here. This is going to tell me the positive. This is f of x, positive real zeros. And we go positive, positive. Okay, I go positive, negative here, and then negative, positive here. So I could have as many as 3 or, remember, I can reduce it by 2 or one positive real zeros. Now, what if we're looking at f of negative x? Remember now, if I'm raising it to an even exponent, my sign from my original function is going to stay the same. So this is going to remain the negative 11x to the fourth. But if I've got 20 times negative x cubed, that would change this sign to 20 negative x cubed plus 3x squared is going to stay the same. It's going to stay positive. But the negative x to the first is going to change. And, of course, the constant is going to stay the same. Now, how many sign changes do we have here? We go negative to negative. Here we go negative to positive. But then everything else is positive. So we can have one negative real zero. Descartes rule of signs. Okay, we got it. And just as an aside, we could have a total of four real zeros. Well, if I got three positive and one negative, there's my real zeros. But if I had one positive and one negative real zero, which is possible, that would be two of the four, which would tell me the other two would be complex. We're looking at the sign changes. F of X, any sign changes that we have can tell us how many positive real zeros. We take that number. If we can reduce that by two, then we got either one in this case, like what we see in this case, either three or one positive real zeros. Then we take f of negative x. When we take f of negative x, if the variable is raised to an even numbered exponent, the sign in the original function is going to remain the same. If it's x negative x raised to an odd power is going to change the sign of the coefficient in the original function. And then we just count up the sign changes. And again, if it's two or more, it can be that number or that number reduced by two. Rene Descartes.